Hello! Um, today is the third and last part of my Arcade Ambush process series. Um, if you want to watch the whole process, you can look at those other videos where I do the um, sketch and the coloring and line art. Um, but this process is about the lighting and rendering. Um, so when I was starting digital art, um, I noticed that the rendering process and speed drawings um, like the one that was um, automatically recorded by Procreate was usually so much shorter than the sketching and line art process, which makes sense since those usually take a lot more time. Uh, but I had no idea how to render, like how they got from the sketch to making it look like a finished piece. Um, and there were so many important decisions that happened in like those final few minutes that um, I just didn't understand. Um, so for this series, I made sure each part was around 10 minutes so I could talk about each step in detail. Um, so for shading in this piece particularly, I wanted it to be simple since there's so much stuff going on. And since with the arcade games, the crystals, the flames on the hangman, and Adine's um, arcane focus, I wanted um, the rest of it to be darker and... Um, so I took the blue that I used in the background and filled the whole canvas with a multiply layer and then I changed the opacity to how I wanted and then I decided where the highlights on the faces and bodies would be and then I used the line art brush to erase those shapes. So I um, made the entire thing dark and then I erased where I wanted it to be lighter. Um, for the lighting, it depended on, you know, where it was, um, but for the arcade games, for the screens, I did the light blue, and then I used a Gaussian blur to make the glow. I played with the layer modes until I found one that I liked, and then I, you know, messed with the opacity to, um, change how bright it was. Um, I think it ended up being on the hard light layer mode. There's also ones like screen and vibrant light, um that would also be good for this as well. Um, for the flames on the hangman, I used several different layers. I had the flat layer, and then I had, um, and then I duplicated that, and then I used Bloom, which is a feature in Procreate. I'm not sure if other, um, programs have it, um, but I used Bloom to make the center brighter, like a fire would be, and then I used, you know, I duplicated it, I used different layer modes until I found something that I liked. But for um, something like adding its orb, I um, did it more manually. I used the jagged brush and went lighter and lighter um, until the center was practically white. Um, and I did, you know, various layer modes. Um, on that, I do a similar process in um, a couple other ones. If you want the um, shading to have more texture or the, the lighting to have more texture, um, you can do it manually instead of using Gaussian Blur. Um, I use the Jagged Brush, which is just one of the default brushes in Procreate, but if you find um, a brush that has a nice um, opacity um, that you can sort of really control, um, that you like, then you can definitely use that too. Um, but you can see where um, I'm sort of shading like Adine's um, face, where I'm sort of erasing where I want it to be lighter because the light is coming up um, at her face, so the bottom of her nose and her chin and um, under her eyes would be um, the lightest part, while there's sort of a rim light around her fingers where she's holding the arcane focus um and other people like Gorgug um and Fig who are mostly in shadow or more difficult but you can see I sort of made a rim light around them where they're sort of being surrounded by um the arcade games and with um Kristen, you can see I put a lot of light on her hair and things like that where the hangman's flames was coming from the other side. Um, so yeah, once I had those base lights and darks, um, I 
made a different multiply layer, um, which was the same blue as the other one, um, and made even darker shadows. So those shadows I drew in instead of erasing, um, and it just sort of went into places like the back of Adine's jacket, um, that's super dark, and the, like, bottom of the hangman's tire, and the back of Gorgug's backpack, and, um, things like that that would be, um, even darker, where, like, someone's neck meets the jaw, places like that, um, and, yeah, if you're having trouble with things like this, um, and, you know, you're trying different layer modes for shading and it isn't quite working, one thing that can make digital art have more depth, um, is adding a gradient over the whole thing and then playing with layer modes. Um, one that I often do is, like, yellow to red, um, or like, almost like a yellow to orange to red to purple gradient, or you can just do like a, a pink to purple to blue, um, like the bi flag, um, and just, um, like changing the layer modes, um, until you find one that looks good with the color palette or the lighting that you want that drawing to have. Um, and then you can also see where I make the pink blobs, um, on the top, um, of sort of Biz's illusory magic um, a bit darker towards the end to make sure that Riz stands out a bit more. And then I take um, basically white and then I add some highlights in like people's eyes and other places. Um, like I believe I add some on like Fig's belt and a couple of like the metal studs on like her belt and jacket. Um, and then I also believe I add a overlay layer of the pink just on the entire drawing and then I change the opacity to like 10 or 20 or so um, just to make all of the colors even more cohesive. Um, one thing that you can do if you have a bunch of colors in a drawing and um, you feel like all of those colors are necessary, that you need all of them, like you can't scale back your color palette. Another way to make all of them cohesive with one another is to add a overlay of um, a color like pink or orange um, or green or whatever color um, to, and then like setting it to a low percentage like 10 or 20 um, to make all of those colors look more cohesive with one another. Um, and then another thing that I do to add a bit of texture is to add a noise layer, um, which is you just choose a middle gray with no saturation, and then you go into um, the sort of settings and effects of whatever program you're using um, and select noise, and then you change that um, layer to overlay, and then it'll just show the grain, not the gray at all. Um, and you can change the opacity on that um, to whatever you like, and it just gives the um, drawing a little bit of texture, which is nice. I know that, um, you know, some people even take, like, just a sample of, like, like watercolor paper or, like, a paper grain, and then they'll add that to a digital drawing to make it seem like it's on real paper, um, which is super awesome if you want um, a you know, graphite, pencil, watercolor feeling in a digital piece. Um, then, for fun, I make some pixelated text that says Arcade Ambush, which is the name of the Fantasy High episode I based this off of, um, and then I just warp it a little bit to make the letters arc around the main drawing, um, so it isn't getting in the way of any of the, um, super important design work. Um, and then I, um, just, like, warp it a little bit, and, um, I 
end up making it red um, because that's a color that's in here but it's not used super often um, and I believe that I, like I duplicate it and I have a dark blue on the bottom um, yeah here's the finished drawing I I hope you learned something through this process um, I know I learned a lot while drawing it um yeah and I hope you have a wonderful day goodbye